Freshman number 31, Devin McPhee. Sophomore number 33, Chris Woodside. And a freshman number 45, Brian Blake. For George Stevens Academy, head coached by Matt Matson. Junior number 21, Dwayne Ladine. Junior number 22, James Friend. Junior number 24, Brandon Allen. Junior number 25, Ben Friedman. Junior number 32, Travis Templeton. Junior number 33, Chris Saunders. And a junior number 51, Chris Kendage. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for your starting lineups, for Callis High School, a senior, five foot nine inch guard, number three, Darren Morrill. For the Eagles of George Stevens Academy, a junior, five foot seven inch guard, number 15, Mike Astbury. For the Blue Devils, a senior, six foot two inch forward, number five, James Preventure. For George Stevens Academy, a junior, five foot nine inch guard, number 20, Mark Clapp. For Callis High School, a sophomore, five foot 11 inch guard, number 24, Andy Frost. For the Eagles, a junior, six foot three inch forward, number 31, Nick Henry. For the Blue Devils, a senior, six foot five inch center, number 51, Joe Footer. For the Eagles, a senior, five foot 11 inch forward, number 40, Jake Lowell. For Callis, a senior, six foot two inch forward, number 53, Chris LaPointe. And for George Stevens Academy, a senior, six foot eight inch center, number 55, Ryan Hutchins. Your officials for this evening's game are Mr. Petrosky, Mr. Plourd, and Mr. Paul. Did you guys get the last game because you all start with P? Away from uh, this uh, contest, the last champion to be crowned this evening, as we've had a uh, champion Saturday, championship Saturday. Callis trying to win its first Eastern Maine title since 1991. George Stevens trying to win its first regional title since being state champions in 1979. And that's when Jim Frost coached. That's, Coach. the, that's the same year Bangor Christian won its last title yeah. for this morning. So Jim Frost is still here. And Callis trying to earn their way into the uh, state final, but they've got an uphill battle against George Stevens Academy, GSA, against the Callis High School Blue Devils. As we get ready, Joe Futter will go up against Hutchins. And the game is underway, and the tip goes out of bounds. So they're going to make a call right now, and it's going to be blue ball, which will be Callis High School. This will be Crystal Point who will put it in play to Andy Frost. Frost with Lowell on him, starts way right down the middle, stops the first shot of the game is no good. Rebound by Preventure, puts it back outside, and rejected by Hutchins, picked off by Lowell, and they're going to call a foul on Frost. Roll stopped and Frost kept going. Frost picks up the first foul, but he attacked the basket pretty aggressively on that first possession for Callis. Lowell will put in play now, looking, goes in the backcourt now to Clapp, now to Asbury. Asbury is their quarterback. He'll be guided by Frost of GSA. Stats to the left side. Now looks in the corner to Matt Clapp. Clapp inside to Hutchins as the first boost right there. Nice and inside pass. 2-0 GSA as Morrill has the ball. Morrill on the dribble now at the top. Goes to Frost. Frost to Preventure. Now comes to Footer. Footer starts to turn. Henry's on him. The shot is up. And no good. Frost comes off the rebound. And stats down the other way. 2-0 the score. GSA leads over Callis here in the early going of this contest. Asbury with it now. Corner goes to clap inside again to Hutchins. Hutchins turns, puts one up, gets all air on that one. The rebound action picked off by LaPointe. As Morrow comes down with it, the Callis goes right to the glass box. He's going to pull it up and he gets the carry. But there's going to be a foul on Hutchins. And Hutchins first, you watch GSA defensively. Nick Henry is guarding Joseph Footer. Hutchins is guarding, to use quotes, 
the point, but he's not leaving the lane. There's Morrill up for the shot, and the body by Hutchins results in the foul. That's the hardest thing to teach young people is not to leave their feet. When they think the ball is going to go up, they go up, and all of a sudden when it doesn't, it makes them look bad. Daryl Morrill, who played a sterling game last evening. He had 10 points in the second half. Open shot is missed, so two miss. Hutchins comes off the rebound, off to Mac Flap. Nice lead pass to Henry. Henry's going to stop. He's going to put it up off the glass. It's no good. Kick off by Hutchins, no good. Hutchins back to himself, puts it up, no good. The rebound finally taken off by Morrill. Morrill out of the pack on the gallop. Stats down with it now. Gathered by Asbury. Goes in the middle of the ball. Deflected away. Mac Flap comes up with it. And GSA will slow the ball down. Good defense by Hutchins. Reaching over the point to tip that pass away. The right side is Asbury. Asbury now to Henry. Henry's going to reel and deal. Falling back and couldn't get it. There's everybody going down the floor. Morrill picks it up. Morrill Callis. 2-0 game. GSA leading. Cross with the ball, got it by Lowell. Now it goes to Joe Footer. Footer puts up a 15 footer and he puts it in. In the backcourt is Asbury, 2 2 tie. Right side to Clap. Clap toward the middle now, turns, looking for help. Now back, back to Asbury. Man to man put up by this Callis team. Now to Clap. Clap goes to baseline, loops it into Hutchins. He's there. That's two nice passes so far from Clap to Hutchins. Clap didn't score a point last night, but you know the respect Callis has for him. They have Andy Frost defending against him. And he's, he's putting the passes right to him so that he won't get in trouble by uh, having to lean for him and maybe pick up a player control pound. Nice strip that time by Asbury. Now to Lowell. Lowell goes right to the glass, misses a shot. And the rebound comes off to Joseph Footer. 4 2 to score, GSA leading. As Andy Frost comes up with it to prevent you. At the top to Footer, got it by Henry. Footer goes right to the glass, puts it up underhand. No good. Rebound action. Ball's knocked out of bounds by GSA. There's Footer's quickness there, able to go around the smaller Henry to get off the scoop shot. Didn't fall, but the ball out of bounds off Henry and back to Callis as Frost comes out of the game here. An early rest for him. So McLean has come in now. Looks like Andy's having a hard time on the bench, too, breathing. McLean with it to the right side goes to Morrill of Callis. That's no pat way down. Nice spin move, puts it up and in. Morrill really aggressive on the offensive end since halftime of the semifinal. He's back at it tonight. 4 4 the score. Early going here, first quarter. And uh, Morrill was over aggressive that yeah. time. Exactly. Draws the foul. That's only the first on him. Asbury is a very difficult guy to steal the ball from. He's not that tall. He protects the ball very well. Very few two turnovers so far in this tournament by the George Stevens point guard. Dwayne Ladeen checks in for GSA. He'll handle the ball on the other bounds pass. Goes to Asbury. Asbury is going to work now behind the back toward the center and to left to Mac Clapp. Now it goes to the middle to Henry. Henry starts to turn down it by LaPointe. Now it goes to Levine. Nice pass to Clapp. Clapp loops it in to Hutchins. And uh, LaPointe went up. Had the ball, but I think he got the hand. But the hand may have gotten the body a little bit too. He's going to call it on the hand. Two shots coming for Hutchins. Good aggressive take to the basket by Hutchins. The point several inches short of did all he could. So Hutchins, uh, Ryan gets ready now for a pair of foul shots, puts it up and in. For a nice touch. Doesn't change the expression on his face. Just plays good basketball. Foul shot up and good. Six to four. Does he have all six? Yes, he does. Six for Hutchins and four for Callis. Morrill with the ball now outside. Got it by Clapp. Now goes to Footer at the top for Venture. Up fakes the ball, but no one moves, so he goes to LaPointe. LaPointe holds it over his head. Now giving the ball inside. Nice move by Morrill. Puts it up. He gets his own rebound. He's in a bad area there. Tip controlled by Asbury. Now it goes to Henry. To Mac Clapp, the top to McLean. 
Six four to score. PSA leading. Now it goes to Ladeen. Ladeen got it by Preventure. Asbury to the right side to clap. Got it by McLean. Claps out the goal. It's going to put it up high off the glass. It's no good. Rebound by Joe Footer. And Callis comes down with it. Footer is still handling the ball. Starts toward the middle now. Left side to Morrow. Now back to Footer. Nice give and go. He's going to put it up. The ball stripped away. Henry's going to pick it up for GSA. And the GSA team goes the other way. The Eagles, maroon and white. Outside, now it goes Connor Ledeen with a three. Going out, no good. Rebound strong inside by LaPointe. And Morrow will come the other way. Looks like Andy has uh, put on a jersey now. It, it, he must be, uh, must have a touch of the flu or something. Shot by Footer is up, doesn't get the roll. Rebound by Hutchins. So this could be uh, the biggest penalty they'll have is not having him in there. That goes a nice drive by young Mr. Asbury, and he puts it off the glass and in, 8-4 to four the score. Doesn't look for his own offense much, but a nice drive there. Morrow comes right back with a glass shot himself, and he puts it in. And Morrow is looking to pick up some of the slack uh, as Andy Frost is sitting over on the bench. 8-6 to six the score, 2 8 left in first quarter action. Now with it in the corner, clap. Now to Hutchins. Hutchins turns with the balls ripped away by McLean, who's in front of him. They had him in back, and they had him in front. McLean, uh, when he brought the ball down, to strip him. No, he didn't take his clothes off. He got the ball. Right side goes to Footer. Footer got it by Henry. Now he wants to move. The ball is uh, tapped away, but he controls it. Now Provincia goes to Morrill. Morrill's going to go right down the lane, leaves it inside, but Hutchins picks it up. And uh, LaPointe was just off balance, but he ran into Hutchins. Yeah, unlucky there by LaPointe as he, he comes to play here. The penetration by Morrow, Hutchins. Uh, LaPointe couldn't get a hold of the ball, and in lunging for it, he ran into Hutchins. Two fouls there on Chris LaPointe, and he's going to sit down for a while. Looks like Andy Foss is going to check back in the game momentarily as Asbury brings down against Morrow. Of GSA leading this uh, game eight to six, and there's going to be another foul. It's going to be called. This on for Venture. Oh, 33. The new man that checked in. That would be uh, Chris Woodside. And he comes in. Moral goes out. So that's only the uh, first one on Chris Woodside of Callis. The car a clap. Clap goes and drives. Now back to Henry. Henry puts up an acre and he puts it in. I'd say Rainmaker, but that wouldn't that be a good like thing to say here. <laughs> rain, right. Rainbow. <laughs> yeah, we better stay away from that. It'll rain on us. Andy Frost with the ball now. Starts to move in the baseline. Gets it outside to McLean. McLean's three is good. Good so. job by Frost penetrating the baseline. Henry right back now. He has the ball from Ladine. Puts it up and in. 12 to 9 as we're working down the end of the first quarter. You can tell Henry is used to shooting over Hutchins in practice, the way he ox it like that. Put it with a ball at the baseline. He puts up a shot, puts it in. Good touch. Anything within 15 feet. Ladine now hooks a pass. It goes to Asbury. Asbury going right down the right side to clap and puts up a three and puts it over the backboard and out of bounds. Yeah, Matt Matson and talking to him before the game was hoping to get some offense out of clap. Clap, a double figure scorer throughout the season, came up empty last night in their victory over Piscataquis, and so far tonight has hit the score. McLean on the dribble, brings the ball up. Out of Frost. Frost turns, goes to the top to Woodside. Woodside uh, back to Footer. Nine seconds left. Footer's going to put up a jump. And nice move, and he turns and turns. 12 to 13 to score. And Asbury is going to throw it at the buzzer. So the only one complete. Now 13, GSA 12. We'll be back with second quarter action right after this. Thirteen to twelve at the end of one period as we get ready to start the second quarter. 
And the Eagles from GSA, John Stevens Academy, will put the uh, ball in play right in front of our advantage point. It goes to Ladine. Ladine turns, now it goes off to Asbury. Asbury works the ball to the left to Ladine. Now in the middle goes to Hutchins, to Ladine. Ladine with a three. No good, rebound, knocked out of bounds by Callis. And GSA were put under their own uh, basket. Henry had the position on the rebound and they have a callous able to knock it out to prevent him from getting a second shot. Cross and a steal. There it goes Lowell with him. Cross puts it up and out. Didn't that take him very long to get down the court, did it? No, no, that's his game. Quickness, jumping ability, athleticism. 15 to 12 now as Callis has a three-point lead here in the second quarter. Asbury with McLean on him. Now brings up as they set up their offense. Ladine. Now inside to Hutchins. Hutchins turns. Now inside to Henry. Nice pass inside to Henry. He had the inside position. He puts it in. 15 to 14. One point difference. Callis leading. McLean to the left to Frost. Now Frost tries to wheel and deal. He puts it up and gets the roll. He appears to be feeling better. <laughs> I'd say so after that one. 17-14 the score. Now Frost with another steal. Let's see what happens this time. He's going to put it up around. No good. And the ball is tipped and knocked out of bounds. Yeah, Frost tipped out of bounds there again, but two steals shows his uh, impact on this game bo at both ends, offensively and uh, breaking down the defense and defensively just getting in passing lanes and causing havoc. Mike DeMollett is now in the game, 14. And the GSA Eagles would like to have a timeout and they take one. They take one and Andy Frost takes a seat back on the Cowboys bench. Looking where he had actually come out before that timeout was called and uh, struggling uh, to breathe and just trying to go at it in short bursts here tonight. These games mean a lot to these kids and they want to uh, give it every effort they can. He's obviously not feeling well, but when he's out there, he makes a difference for the Blue Devils. Callis has not broken out yet. Now they do. McLean, Pudmorrow, DeMollett, and Provincher, and Joe Footer. And as Henry gets the ball off to Asbury in the backcourt, Morrow will guide him. Asbury on the dribble, down the middle, goes in the corner to Lowell. Back outside, clap, now left side to Asbury. Asbury starts to work, bounces inside to Hutchins. He doesn't have the shot. Now at the top goes to clap. Clap right down the lane, and let's see if they call a foul. Or so it was a holding. It's going to be a foul, and I think it's going to be two shots for uh, Mark Clap. Here he is driving the baseline, reaching right there. Mr. DeMolin. By DeMolin. His first foul. I spoke to him last night. And I was asking him pronunciations of the different kids. And he says, mine is DeMolla. <laughs> and I said, you going to get in the game? He said, I don't know. <laughs> but he's in tonight. Absolutely. Come in. <laughs> Clapp makes his first foul shot. Matt Clapp, son of Rob Clapp, who played for GSA as well. 17 to 16. He played. Back in the great days when Jones Ford Beals and the Clavers were uh, around. Morrow outside to the right to Demolla. I should say McLean now Demolla takes the shot. Now it goes to Footer. Footer starts to move. Demolla outside. Hutchins that way out with him. Now it goes to Morrow. And the ball is taken away by Jake Lowell. Yeah, Lowell's a strong defender. You can't put the ball in his face or he'll take it from you, as he did right there. McLean, now the right side of Clapp. Clapp's going to stop, go to Henry. Henry pat way in, wants to work. He's going to send him on a high action shot. No good, Footer with a rebound. Good blocks out that time by Joe Footer to keep uh, Hutchins from getting his hand in there. Provincia, James looking inside. Now it comes inside to Morrow. The Morrow's going to take a shot. It's no good. Rebound by Morrow. Morrow spins in a crowd and he just gets jammed. <laughs> he doesn't much care who's in the way. He's going up with his shots when he gets in there, but he works very hard. 
to get those opportunities. Ladeen comes back in. I, he got smacked in the nose. He got hit in the nose yesterday, too. <laughs> well, he Boy, gets right he, in the middle. He gets I guess so. <laughs> right in the middle of the trees, and he's always in danger. And you get a beat up every time. Don't go back in. Damala takes another three. It's no good. Rebound by Hutchins. And Clapp will bring down off to Asbury. Asbury, the quarterback of this team. Now bounce to goes to Clapp. Clapp looking inside. Now it goes back to Asbury. Asbury works the ball to right to Ladeen. Ladeen holds the ball. Now back up outside to Asbury. 17-16 the score. Callis by one. The 450 Lorraine. Clapp uh, the sails up by sails up by Hill Mary. And Fuller comes off with the uh, rebound. Goes in the corner to James Provincia. Provincia looking inside. Now goes to outside to McLean. McLean on the dribble. Back to Provincia. This is a two. It's important to Callis to have somebody hit a jump shot so that not even, uh, so even more defenders won't collapse on footer. The dean of a three, it's no good. Comes back outside, McLean picks it off. McLean starts going with the ball. On the dribble, now at the top in the lane and loses the ball and goes out of bounds. And no one touched it, just squirted out of his hand. Henry put in play to get the ball down. Asbury wants to work against Morrill. Behind the back to the left side. Whoop. Now yeah, goes to Clapp. He saw the same thing. <laughs> Henry, now to Hutchins with that soft touch. He puts it in. Hutchins are facing the basket uh, creates a matchup problem for Cowers because he can shoot over pretty much anybody, including Footer. Now Gamala inside the Footer. Joe puts up another one. It's no good. He's right in the middle of Gamala. Gamala is as the ball is taken away from by Ladeen. Get them all. Now Henry. Henry turns back to Ladeen. Gets the ball in the middle. Oh, watch this at this position. That was like uh, bounced three different times. And, and Henry had it, but he had the ball knocked out of bounds. He'll still retain the ball. It looked like on that last play we both saw, it looked like a double dribble. Yeah. It also looked like he pushed it off at the same time. Yeah, exactly. He was yes, very. Here he goes. He has it, and nice strip that time by McLean. As Ladine's outside three, and he nails it. That's one of Ladine's biggest contributions to George Stevens Academy is the long shot, and that gives the Eagles a two-point lead. 21-19 the score. Now the hook pass in as uh, Fuller comes up with it. That was from Morrill, kind of a telegraph, and so when they once he cocks it back, they just put their hands up. Now the left side goes to the point. And the corner goes to Morrow. Morrow's trying to get the baseline. He's going to go up. He does not clear, does he? <laughs> now, and he used the basket to his advantage there. He used it as sort of a screen, so Hutchins couldn't get to his shot. Matt Clapp with the ball. Now at the top goes to Asbury. 21-21. 2.43 left. Now it goes uh, to Clapp, to Hutchins with a soft touch. Puts up no good. Follows his shot. And the point comes off the rebound for Callis. You don't see uh, kids uh, nowadays following the shot, but you saw Ryan Hutchins on that one. There's Morrill again. This is it off inside, and the shot is missed by LaPointe. Scrambles to the rebound, but Clapp comes off with it, and there's going to be a traveling violation. I mean, a traveling violation. Matt Matson says the reason my player traveled is because he was pushed, but that's not what the call is, so Cowles will get possession on the turnover. Lowell checks back in. Matt Clapp is uh, going out of the game with 2.21 remaining. Asbury goes down. Fuller with the ball. Has to move, and there's Asbury. Long pass goes to Lowell. Lowell's going to put it off the glass and in. Now you've got two and three people running at Fuller now because they don't have the other offensive threats out there. And speaking of Cowles, with Cross sitting on the bench. And a timeout being asked for a 30-second timeout with a score of 23-21 with 2.06 remaining. Boy, it's, uh, it, it really, it, it's a great game up to this point. Everybody's, you know, doing their thing. Keith Ogden just spent about 25 seconds talking directly to Joe Forder. It's got to have something to do with uh, what he's doing out there and what to do perhaps when the guards on the perimeter come out to double-team you. If that's happening, other guys are open. You've got to distribute the basketball. Joe Furter's got to watch out how much dribbling he does out there against the likes of Clapp 
and Ladine and Asbury. Frost checks back in the game for the Callis team. And he'll be handling the ball right there. Andy Frost and a whistle away from the play. And uh, the George Stevens Academy uh, boys are cheering, so it must be against Callis. And I guess it's gets more. It must be an illegal screen. It's the only thing I can think of there is uh, Morrill trying to free up a teammate. It's going to be his second. It's going to be seventh on the team. Pretty remarkable. 2-0-2 uh, left in the first half. George Stevens Academy playing man-to-man -man defense with the exception of Hutchins, who was essentially playing a one-man zone. And George Stevens has committed just one foul while Callis is up to seven, putting George Stevens in the bonus. Dwayne Ladine on the line. Ball shot up and it's no good. Rebound taken off by Footer. Off to Morrill. Morrill stats down with it. Got it by Asbury. Now left side to Frost. Frost got it by Lowell. Jake stays right with it. Now he puts up a That was a Hail Mary and a half. And he got up in the air leaning forward. Off balance shot goes and uh, Chance for a three-point play. He is crossed here. One dribble to his left, two dribbles, three dribbles. Stops, pump fake, up, and over. Lowell, and then makes the free throw for the three-point play. 24-23. Dallas uh, regains the lead now. Ladine with it. Now back to Asbury. Asbury is over the 10-second line. Off to Ladine on the side. Back to Asbury, 135 left. Turns, still turns, now for Ladine. There's Asbury Ladine playing catch outside. With 124 left. Dallas now in the zone. Looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. Now Henry. Now Ladine with a three. It's no good. Rebound by Andy Frost. Up Callis. 24-23 with 109 left. Now he takes a downtown three. It gets all air. Lowell stays right there with him, and they're talking to each other as Clapp gets ready to check back in, and Jake Lowell checks out. That's not really much of Andy Frost's game. He will not shoot many three-point shots. Asbury brings the ball up for GSA. Ladine still in the backcourt. Now comes over the 10-second strike. Back to Asbury. The right side, Ladine. Ladine in the corner to Clapp. Clapp in the long three. All oh, air, yeah, there's Hutchins. He's got position inside, and he puts it up and in. Maybe that was a pass. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> As we saw again by Frost, he misses a follow up his miss. And going up is the point. And going down high is Asbury. He's going to have a foul call sending the point to the line. The point's doing a lot of good work on the inside. Just can't get a shot to draw. I think, I think Asbury just got smacked. See his... His mouth looks like he, got, he cut himself, either his nose or his mouth. Here's a rebounding action. LaPointe strong to the... I don't see exactly what happened to uh, Asbury, but he comes up bleeding on the lip there after tying it up with LaPointe. So checking in for George Stevens Academy will be uh, Brandon Allen. Number 24 as Chris LaPointe uh, takes his foul shot and misses it. 24-25. GSA leads by one here in the third, uh, second period. 32.7 left. And the second shot by LaPointe is good. Red ties it at 25. 25 apiece, had earned baskets. This is not, this has been a war, if you want to know. Allen, now Ladine, off to Henry. Henry with it at the top, Ladine outside. Henry stats down the middle. Now Ladine. Cross comes out the challenge. Now the cross going under 10 seconds. Now to Henry. Henry's going to work so he can get the shot. It goes right to the lane. Puts it up. It's no good. Gets a rebound. Fights for it. Point comes out. Of it. So at the end of one half a play, you can't get any even on that. It's 25 to 25. And it looks like um, as I watch uh, Allen walk, not Allen, but Asbury walk off, I think it was in the mouth. Yeah, it looked like his bottom lip there was, was bleeding before, or his mouth, and uh, he's trying to stem the bleeding. 
You know, we kind of expected a defensive battle, and that's exactly what we've got. Some hard-nosed action. Of course, the one thing we didn't anticipate going in was the health of Andy Frost, who has had to play in, in uh, brief spurts here. But 25-25 uh, at the half, I think both coaches are relatively satisfied that they go into the second half with a chance still to win the Eastern Main Championship. Uh, not a lot of foul trouble. Heck, uh, George Stevens, only one or two fouls. I think two fouls in the entire half. Cal is barely into the bonus, so foul's not an issue at this point. Uh, I have to go. Nothing decided yet. Go GSA. Ah, these two little <laughs> cuties right there. <laughs> nice eagle crowns there. We like those. Well, it'd be interesting to see how uh, Frost is coming out of the break. Sometimes he may have time to take some fluids or something to help him out, or, uh, or maybe uh, stopping will be the worst thing to happen. You really don't know in some of these uh, illness situations, but sometimes when you get playing again, you don't think about not feeling well, and, and maybe that'll help him in the second half. And with that, we'll be back in just a moment. Crystal Point with one for their total of 25. Not much to choose as we look at the team statistics either. Cal is shooting 36% on 11 of 30 from the field. GSA 37% on 10 of 27 from the field. Cal is two of five from the line. GSA four of five from the line. Not a lot of turnovers. Cal is with six. George Stevens Academy with four. Uh, relatively cleanly played game. As we, as we mentioned, very few fouls collectively either. So with the, uh, the score tied here at the halftime, 25 to 25. We'll momentarily be ready to start the second half. Because Cal was got to the Eastern Main final a year ago and was knocked off by Piscataquist Community High of Guilford. And I read where Joe Footer uh, said, last year we were just happy to be here and this year we want to do something. Hence the t-shirts the of woulda, coulda, and shoulda. And next year is now that uh, Cowis wore as warm-up jerseys. George Stevens, of course, uh, wanting to do something to deny Callis that uh, Andy Cross is starting the second half as uh, LaPointe will put the ball in play right in front of our uh, monitor. And we're ready for basketball action. Cross will handle. Jake Lowell comes up to guide him the left side to Morrill of Callis. 25-25 to score, now to Frost. Frost uh, penetrates the baseline, nice move, and draws a foul from Lowell. He's Frost. so quick. Yeah, exactly. Frost gets by uh, Hutchins easily there, mismatch, and then uh, Lowell, the original defender on Frost, Frost got wrist and ball. Andy Frost at the line. So Andy will get ready to shoot a pair. The first one is up and good. And that uh, gives the lead to Callis now, 26-25. As Andy gets ready for the second shot, that's good as well. And they're putting the pressure in the backcourt on Todd Stevens. Bringing the ball up as Asbury to the left side on the dribble. Now to the right side, now to Lowell. Big stats to work as Asbury goes down again. Frost picks the ball up, going right to the glass, picks it in, draws a foul. Yeah, a couple of mistakes by Lowell there. First, the air and pass, and then uh, going in to commit the foul and not getting a piece of the ball. Frost now with a chance to uh, <laughs> make a three-point play. Lowell checks out, Ladeen checks in, so I imagine Ladeen will have the job of trying to guide Andy Frost. Maybe Andy's gonna wear himself out. He had to believe he's only a sophomore. The shot is missed. Hutchins comes off with it. Now going down is Mac Clapp. Mac Clapp goes right by. Frost turns, scoops it to Henry. Henry, uh, fall away, gets all air. Picked off by Andy Frost. Frost dashed down the other way. Nice pass inside the point, back to Frost. Frost has to move, he's gonna go. Tricky dribble, puts it up over the glass and in. That's Frost at his best offensively, getting into the paint and shooting around and over people. So it's the Andy Frost show here to start this, uh, the third period. As, uh, as Barry works the ball, it finally goes into Hutchins from Clapp, and he turns around, puts in a half a hook. Boy, he's, uh, once he gets the ball inside, he knows what to do with it. 27-31 the score. Morrow with the ball, got it by Asbury. Now inside uh, and to Footer, and they're gonna call a foul on Henry. 
Henry anticipating the pass, getting in front of Forda, but grabbing the arm as he goes for the ball. Nick Henry only his first, but more importantly, the third team foul picked up by uh, GSA. And Callis has not uh, committed a foul as yet. Nice pass back goes to Morrow to LaPointe. Now to Provincial with outside shot off the front. And goes, I don't think he got anything. Yep, maybe a little piece of the net, but it goes out of bounds. Now Asbury. Asbury working against Morrow behind the back. Stats to the left side. Now bounce goes in the corner to Ladine back to Asbury at the top. Goes to Mac Clapp. Mac starts to work. Now the right side goes to Henry. Henry's going to put up a shot pop. No good. Asbury in the rebound. Good box out that time by Chris LaPointe. So Henry couldn't get a second uh, attempt. Now it goes to Provincia. James holds it over at the top. Goes to Footer. Footer's going to turn. Put one up. It's no good. Rebound action. Henry comes off with it. Now off to Asbury. Asbury stands down with it. Gives to Clap. Clap uh, is called for traveling. George so Stevens struggling a little bit here in the first half. Just uh, two points through a little over two minutes. 31 27 the score. Morrill brings down. To the right side goes to Frost. Frost wants to work through the legs now at the top to Provincia. Back to Frost for the Callis team. Stats to go, stops. Now he's going to put one up. It's around and good. It still is the Andy Frost show. 33-27. He's got eight, isn't he, in this uh, quarter? He's got eight indeed. He's got all of them for Callis. Eight and going. And Hutchins turns but draws a foul from Joe Footer. And now all 55 or? Frost is going to take a break here as uh, McLean comes back in. And that was, I guess, the limit on Frost. He's going to sit down, and take a break, get some more fluids, and try to come back here in a few minutes. Hutchins shot is up, and it's no good. Rebound taken off by LaPointe. That foul was on Footer. So that's the first on the uh, Callis team, first on Joe Footer. Now it comes outside from McLean to Morrill. Morrill starts to go out and loses the ball, but Morrill picks it up. Uh, McLean picks it up, brother. He puts it up. No good. Rebound by Hutchins. <laughs> oh, I think uh, whoever's on the floor got an elbow on that one. I think that's Morrill again. I'm not sure. Yep. Indeed it is. <laughs> Who else? Boy, the kid is a scrapper. Whoa. There he goes. Oh, he's he got the elbow. He's going to lose that battle every time. <laughs> he just seemed to get under it, and when he did, he got hammered. And he picks up his third personal foul, so he goes out of the game. And... Uh, Mike Demolet comes in, number 14. Boy, sometimes the land of the Giants, it doesn't pay. Clap with it. Now Mark works back outside to Asbury. Asbury, nice inside pass, goes to Hutchins. He turns and misses. Footer comes off the rebound. And as Joe brings it down on the dribble, off to McLean. McLean against uh, Clap. Now it's out to the left side for Callis. This is Provincia. James at the top. Demolet to the right side to McLean. McLean turns. Clap right there with him. Now it goes to Woodside. Woodside puts it up and in. Nice hoop there. Callis extends the lead to eight points, which is pretty remarkable considering Frost has been in and out of the game, and Footer has just six points. Now Nick Henry turns to Clap. Clap for the three. Yes, they needed that. And GSA asked for a 30-second timeout after the basket. So it's 35 to 30 now here in third period. 4.09 remaining. Yeah, timeout there after a nice jump shot that uh, a long-awaited jump shot for the GSA fans by Mark Clapp. As uh, you mentioned, Joe, badly needed shot. Uh, Callis has been getting whatever offense there has been here in the third quarter. Not a lot to speak of, but Paul Callis is coming from Several different players are getting contributions from a lot of people, having to go a little bit deeper into the bench with Demolet, given the uh, illness uh, situation with Frost. But uh, so far, things looking good for the Cowboys Blue Devils. And they'll be putting the ball in play, going the full length of the court. Footer, Footer, still looking. Five seconds. It looked too long. And GSA's defense uh, wouldn't let anything. And Andy Frost comes back in. Demolet's going to go out.
as the pass comes to Nick Henry. Henry turns now, goes the corner. There's Clapp with another three. It's no good. Rebound inside Ladine. Ladine puts it up. It's no good. Rebound off by Joe Footer. And Andy Frost will handle the ball. Andy to the right side to James Provincher. Now it goes to Footer. Footer in traffic. He stops, puts it up, and Asbury is fouling. The basket count. The shot goes in. Yep. Footer for a three point play as Asbury with just a reach in. 37 30, Callis lead. Joe Footer gets ready for, to cap off the three, and he does. 38 to 30, the score. Mark Clapp is going to race right to the basket. Now he stops. The ball's behind him. Now he's going to put a fadeaway up. He hits the side of the backboard. And that'll be a poor choice there. Yeah, exactly. And Frost comes back with it. Now to the left side for Venture. Pulls over his head, looking uh, for the top now. Asbury tries to steal. McLean's going to put up a three. He nails it. McLean makes Asbury pay for that gamble. Asbury gambled on the steal. McLean was left wide open. Knocks down the three and Dallas up by 11 here in the third quarter has outscored GSA 16 to five over the last four and a half minutes. And uh, George Stevens Academy needs to regroup. In the semifinal, George Stevens allowed Piscataquist the defending Eastern Maine champions 43 points in the entire game. And his cow is sitting on 41 with a quarter and a half to play. So Matt Matson calls a quick timeout. And GSA goes back on the floor, trailing by 11 with uh, 322 left in third quarter. We've got another quarter to go after that. So try to peck away. But uh, Frost started it off, and uh, they just haven't stopped. Yeah, he's only able to go in spurts, but pretty impressive spurts they are. Henry now to Asbury. Asbury turns, got it by Woodside. Nice pass goes to Hutchins. Hutchins going to put off the glass and in. They get back two there, 41-32. Cross with it, Lowell after him. Now he's going to turn and pop it up. It's no good. Rebound action, the ball is knocked out of bounds, but it's knocked out by GSA. So Callis will put it in play. McLean will put it in. Russ McLean loops a pass to Frost. Frost at the top now to Provincia. Back to uh, Andy. Now it goes in the middle to Footer. Footer's going to turn in a crowd. Puts it up no good. Hutchins comes off the rebound. Ladeen slows the ball down. And it goes off to Asbury. Asbury gets by McLean. Stops down the middle. Goes to to Lowell. Now back outside to Asbury. At the top to Ladeen. Now goes to Henry, and Henry's being fouled by Provencia. Yeah, good low post position by Henry there. Provencia tried to get around, but made contact with the body. Just the first foul of the game on James Provencia. Clapp uh, comes back in the game. Lowell checks out for GSA. Hutchins with a three, no good. Henry with a rebound. Rejected in there by Joe Footer. 41-32 to score. 227 remains here in third quarter. Frost to the right side. Foul line extended is Provincia. Looking inside now to Woodside. Woodside reels and deals. Puts up a left hand, no good. Rebound taken off underneath by Clapp. Off to Asbury. Ladine to Henry. Henry's going to turn, and they're going to call another foul on Provincia. Yeah, that's number two on Provincia in short order there. Again, Henry establishing early position on the low post, and once he got the ball, he wheeled toward the middle, and uh, the contact was made. Provincia usually gets the tough forward. He had Tyler Putnam from shot up and missed in there by the rebound. Whoa. <laughs> Woodside caught a piece of that, but the rebound was by Hutchins, put it back up and drew the foul from Footer. There you go there, good inside position there by Hutchins, offensive glass, Footer up in the air, gets the ball, but what you don't see there is Barty to Barty, and that's where the foul was called, sending Hutchins to the line for two. Foul shot is up. Tyler Putnam uh, plays for Hodgson, and that was a tough uh, draw, but he did a nice job on him, and now he's got the draw on Nick Henry as uh, Hutchins gets ready for his second shot. 32 to 41 to score. He makes it. 
33-41 now. GSA trails by eight. Andy Frost with the ball, got it by Clapp. Frost way out the midcourt area. Now to Provincia. Stassi drive, puts a block up on the baseline and hits it. That's one way to make up for a couple of fouls. Nice, uh, nice shot that time. Asbury coming down, McLean on him, and McLean is fouling him. Yeah, McLean riding him just a little bit. Not a lot of contact there, but it was steady contact from backcourt to front court. The foul is called. That's the first, and that's the, uh, the sixth on the Callis team. So the next one, the GSA will be in a one-on-one situation. As LaPointe checks back in, Woodside checks out for Callis. Right side to Clapp. Now Clapp goes to the top to Asbury. Now Ladine into Hutchins. Got it by Footer. Puts up a half a hook. No good. Nice follow. Puts it back up. No good. Tip up off the glass and Footer comes off with it. You saw Ryan Hutchins again follow his shot. He had a second effort but couldn't cash in. Now McLean with the ball. Got it by Asbury at the top to Provincia of Callis. Now to the right side to Andy Frost. Frost on the dribble, down the middle. He's going to wheel and deal, put it up. It's no good. Rebound by LaPointe. LaPointe is rejected in there by Hutchins. And Matt Clapp comes off of the ball. Good hustle by LaPointe, but Hutchins too big in there. Henry, Henry with the up fake, trying to get by LaPointe. And now uh, Provincia's gone out to God Clapp. This is Asbury. Asbury GSA to the right side. Ladine with an outside three, no good. Rebound action underneath, taken off by Joe Footer again. So Footer kind of uh, starting to pick up the uh, momentum here as far as rebounding goes defensively. At the top, Andy Frost. 33-43 the score as we're coming down to the end of the third period. McLean to the right side to Frost. Frost now at the top to Footer. Joe works and goes back to Frost. Frost is going to go. Frost puts up a wild one. Picked by Hutchins. And Asbury is firing up at the end of three complete. It's Callis 43, GSA 33. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right after this. Get a good close-up look at uh, Mike, uh, not Mike Asbury, but yeah, Mike Asbury. And his lip, his top lip is uh, pretty well ballooned up. He took a tumble down into the basket just before the half, but he stayed in. He's a gritty kid. You need those kids from the, uh, from the ocean are pretty tough boys. Now it goes to Clapp in the middle to Hutchins. Hutchins is going to turn, put it up and in. He just has to stand there, reach up over Footer. He's 6'8", Footer 6'5". Down with it now is Andy Frost, 35-43 the score. Final Provincia, Provincia with a long shot, no good. Rebound action. There's going to be a jump ball. It's going to be possession of uh, Callis. Yeah, Frost and Clapp there. And uh, George Stevens uh, gets a hoop from Hutchins to start the fourth quarter. Really needs to find its offense. It's going to come back in this eight-point deficit. McLean uh, to Frost. Frost to the top of Venture, the right side, McLean. McLean's going to stop at a jumper. It puts it up as no good. Rebound in there by Clapp. The box to Frost out nicely. Now the pass goes to Ladine. Ladine, nice wheel. It puts it up. He misses the shot. Fuller comes off of the rebound. Fuller not scoring a lot, but making his presence felt on the defensive end and in rebounding. There goes Andy Frost. He's rejected by Hutchins. The ball is on the floor. Loose meat picked up by Clapp of GSA. Boy, both these teams want this game. Clapp's outside three. He nails it. Clapp starting oh. to find the range. That's his second three here in the second half. 43-38 to score. Mark Clapp, the junior, puts another three in. McLean, that goes to, to Provincia. He's going to take a jump shot. He puts it in. Really hasn't seen him shoot that much in this tournament, but tonight he's uh, firing them up and they're going in. Yeah, it's interesting that Callis has gotten away a little bit from really searching out footer on the offense, too. They're getting some perimeter shots and some results, 
from prevention, but uh, I think we're going to have a, a little bit of a blood situation with Clap, maybe a scrape on the knee that's going to require some taping, and he'll have to sit out for a second. Jake Lowell comes back in as he get ready for basketball action. 38-45 to score with 6.40 left. Asbury bringing the ball up behind his back now, moves to the left. Shot by Hutchins and he hits. Boy, he's, he can go deeper on the baseline and smack him through. Yeah, he's turned away from that hook shot, going to the baseline jumper twice in a row. He's been rewarded. 45-40, Clapp will come back in the game. LaPointe with it now. Turns, gives it off to Frost. Frost downs to the middle, bouncing the corner, goes to Morrill. Morrill puts up a shot, it's no good. Rebound inside by Joe Footer, stripped, but he picks it back, puts it up off the glass, no good, tips it in. First time Footer's seen the ball in a while, had to go get it off the offensive glass, but worked and got the basket on the second attempt. 47 40 now with 5.55 left. Asbury on the dribble against Morrill to the corner, it goes to Lowell. Now at the top, the Ladeen of GSA. Right side, Asbury, now in the middle to Nick Henry, and he's being fouled by LaPointe. Yeah, Henry cutting to the ball, cutting to the lane, and LaPointe on his back for another foul and a one and one. Number three on LaPointe. Nick Henry will go to the line for one and one. GSA's only committed four team fouls, so it'll be three more before we can put, or they can put uh, Callis on the line. Foul shows up by Nick Henry and good. And GSA had three right off the bat in the third quarter too, so they've calmed down on that uh, pretty effectively. Next shot goes up, that's in as well. 42-47 now, it's a five point difference. Andy Frost with it, got it by Matt Clapp. Starts down with it, loops the pass over to Morrill on the right side, Morrill toward the glass, now he hauls it back, now he tries to go again. Stops, loops it back out to Frost. Frost turns, clap right there with him. Good man-to-man -man put up by this uh, GSA team. Now skips in the corner, LaPointe goes to Morrill. Morrill file on extended to the left, gives inside to Footer. Footer wants to reel and deal, and the ball is stripped away and picked up by GSA. Yeah, Asbury with a reach and no foul there, gets the ball. The entire GSA defense collapses as soon as Footer gets the ball. Asbury with it. Right side, Ladine. now to Henry inside. Now to Hutchins at the foul line, yes! They come right back. They work the ball around for the good shot. They're down by three. Preventure in the left baseline. Now in the middle of the footer. Joe Turns going to put one up hard off the glass. And I think he missed that when he threw it up so hard because Hutchins came up and got his hand up. Yeah, and Asbury reached in again from behind. Didn't strip the ball, but made contact with the ball. Ladine with an outside three. No good. Footer off of the rebound. Rebound came right. Ladine followed his shot, but the footer was there. Frost behind the back now bounces to Provincia with the shot, no good. LaPointe comes off the rebound. He's in traffic, puts it up, it's no good. Tip up, no good. The ball is still tipped up, but finally picked up by Matt Clapp. There's Morrill trying for the steal. Clapp comes right back with it. Provincia goes down, Clapp takes the shot, no good. And Fuller comes off with still another rebound. 4.02 remains in this contest. Class C, Eastern Maine Championship on the line. Provincia with it, foul line extended to the right. Takes the upshot, looks inside, and there's gonna be a timeout. Uh, yeah, five seconds. Five second violation as Provincia was looking to get the ball inside to footer or take the shot, couldn't make up his mind, and the turnover results, and we've got a timeout. Well, I mentioned a moment ago, outside of the fourth quarter, that uh, George Stevens needed to rediscover its offense, and uh, they have in the person of Ryan Hutchins, Joe. He's he goes uh, baseline left, he goes baseline right, top in the, in the lane, and he's got a very nice touch. Clap, of course, ignited with those two threes. So they're down by four points, GSA, that is, with 350 remaining in this contest. Yeah, it's a... Uh, down to a three minute game, three and a half minute game, 350 to be exact. And you know, the good thing too is that Callis is playing with Andy Frost. Whether Callis wins or loses this game, Andy Frost has uh, been able to play essentially for the for the entire second, ha second half. He missed a minute or two in the third quarter, but, but he's been in there for uh, pretty much the entire second half, and that's good to see. He's still in as he 
Callis comes out and the GSA team will put the ball in play in front of the Callis bench. Now it goes to Asbury. Asbury wants uh, everyone to clear as he starts to bring down Morales there with him. Right side goes to Clapp. Clapp turns and stops there in the lane. Now goes off to Asbury. Asbury into Hutchins. Hutchins going to turn, put up another shot. And it's in. Yeah, he's found a home on the baseline there. The jump hook wasn't working before the rolling hook, but the uh, baseline jumper is paying a lot of dividends. One point difference now. Provincia with it for Callis. Stats uh, to the left and gives the ball to Footer. Joe wants to work on Henry. He puts up a jumper no good. Rebound strong inside by Clapp. Yeah, good defense again by Henry on the perimeter against Footer. Asbury to the left side. Ladine to Hutchins. Now the ball is knocked away by Frost. And a sub will come in. This will be McLean. McLean will come in for LaPointe. You notice that time the ball went down to Hutchins in the low post and three Cowboys players immediately collapsed. Outside to Asbury, three minutes left, 46-47 to score. Callis leads by one point over George Stevens Academy. Now Hutchins from the foul line is no good. Rebound taken off underneath by Henry. He loses it on the end line. Yeah, couldn't grab it the first time. Lost out of bounds. Matt Matts on the sideline saying, grab it, Nick, grab it. <laughs> Footer. Now Provincher off to Frost. Andy with the ball. Now he works toward the top. Now it goes right side to Provincher. He's going to send up a three and he nails it. Over Hutchins. Oh, good shot that time. Nice bounce pass from Asbury to Hutchins. Misses, follows it up, and draws a foul. And uh, Footer is drawing the foul. Yeah, foul on the rebound there as. Uh, Hutchins missed from one side, quickly over to the other side, put her on his back the entire time. Here's Hutchins on the layup on the fast break pass from Asbury. Overshoots that, but goes right to the glass, and there's Porter from behind with a foul, his third. So a chance uh, with, a, with a four point difference to cut it to two, foul shot's good. 50, 47 to 50 now, as Hutchins gets ready for his second shot. Up and no good. Rebound by Footer. And Footer, the reason he got the rebound was he was in the lane. So Mr. Hutchins goes back for another shot. Gets ready, that goes up, and it's no good. Footer again with the rebound. It looks at the official. <laughs> was I in that time too? 50 47, 222 left. Morrow with the ball. Now to Frost. Frost starts to go to the baseline. Frost puts it up and in, and he comes down on his back. Yeah. Oh, he came down hard. Strong drive, but the slightest bit of contact when he's as high in the air as he gets creates a long way to fall. There's Frost beating Clap off the dribble. Goes up, draws contact from a couple of George Stevens defenders and lands squarely on his back, and he's now being... Uh, attended to by the trainer on the court and uh, not doing too well at the moment. 2.13 remaining as Andy's trying to get up, but Mateo wants him to stay for a minute. He's talking to him. They're up with an off balance. Now he starts to walk over to the bench. And we've got a 52-47 uh, game with 2.13 left. GSA back on the floor. Anyone's game at this point. Yeah, big basket by Frost. Extends the lead back to five. But he is uh, feeling the pain and may sit here for a moment. The point comes back in the game. And uh, well, Frost uh, has five in, so Frost Gets ready, he's not in the game now, but he gets over the scorer's table. A pass to Asbury in the backcourt with 2.07 left. Asbury working against Morrill now to clap. Clap inside to Hutchins. Hutchins going to turn him, puts it up and in. There's the hook Boy, again. He, he owns that lane, doesn't he? 52-49, three-point difference. McLean over the 10-second line, out of LaPointe, out of footer. And uh, 
Dallas wants another timeout. Yeah, one thing they want to do is get Frost back into the game. Uh, maybe one reason for the timeout. He's one of their best offensive weapons, one of their best ball handlers, and uh, is capable of creating a shot for either himself or his teammates there. Uh, boy, impressive basketball down the stretch here by both teams. Hutchins for George Steven, immense here with uh, 11 points in the quarter. 15, 16 and a half, 26 overall, unofficially. We were tied at 25 at halftime, and Callis took a 10-point lead at the end of three, and now we have a three-point lead uh, with Callis still ahead, 151 remaining in this contest. Frost in there now, got it by Clapp. Stasigal in the middle, he's gonna put it up, off, no good. Rebound by Clapp. Hutchins was there to prevent that basket. As Asbury brings down, Asbury to the left side now on the dribble, on the turn, puts it outside as Clapp. Clapp fakes the shot. You see the, the, the bench get up when the, they thought Clapp was gonna fire it up. Now it goes inside to Henry. Henry's gonna turn and be fouled by Moore. Yeah, from behind, Moore with a reach in on the double team. So Nick Henry goes to the line. He's a pretty good foul shooter. And they're down by three points at 123 left to go. And it doesn't seem, to, you have the feeling there's no urgency on either side. I think they, yeah, I think they both think there's more time left to the game than there I is. I really do. The foul shot is up and good. It, it just seemed like uh, that uh, the GSA just exudes uh, calmness. I think it's the nature of both of these teams. Uh, you're right. They just, uh, everything's under control. Foul shot is up and good, so we get a one-point ball game here. 122 remaining. Class C, Eastern Maine Championship on the line. Frost with it now. Frost holds over, still holding, still holding, still holding. It was a five-second, oh, he calls timeout. Oh, it was close to a five-second uh, call, and Keith Ogden sensing that, called a timeout. Full timeout for Callis as every possession now becomes important. Callis up by one point at 52. 51 with 113 to go, looking to get a good shot. Either Frost probably on a penetration and then see who comes to him, find the open man, or look for Footer flashing into the lane to the high post to see what he can get. Although George Stevens has been pretty effective in denying him the ball. Matt Matson, the George Stevens coach, stressed the need to not allow Footer to get 25 shots during this game in order to be, to, uh, for his team to be successful. And so far, uh, Florida does not have anywhere near 25 shots. GSA, we can hear in the background. As Andy Foss has the ball now. The right side to Preventure. Preventure looking now, baseline goes to Footer. Footer back outside to Preventure. Holds that foul line extended to the right. Now it goes to Morrow. Morrow loses the ball, now picks it up. Scott's to go in the basket. He puts it back outside of Footer. Stripped in there by Ladeen, and a jump ball is going to be possession for GSA. Yeah. So a big steal that time. He big. got his hand in, and Ladeen did. Yeah, George Stevens doing a lot of that. Weak side, the perimeter play is reaching in to try to cause havoc for Footer, and that time gets the held ball. Yeah, yeah. timeout. Uh, good call by Nick Henry. Couldn't get the ball in, so we called the timeout. Yeah, that's the most important thing right now. You can't score unless you get the ball inbound, so. Matt Matson over there diagramming an inbounds play against the Callis defense, and then uh, look for him to do what's been working here in the second half, and that is uh, Mr. Hutchins somewhere around the baseline. And that's uh, that. The question now becomes: Do they come down and uh, flit around with uh, trying to go ahead, or do you come down now and try to get that deuce to get ahead or a tray? You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I mean, don't let too much time go off the clock because if they get the ball, you know what they're going to do. I think you run your offense, but you get the ball to Hutchins in the post as soon as you can. So I wouldn't expect them to run a lot of time off the clock. Clapp will put inbounds the ball. He does. He gets it back. Now it gets off to Asbury. Asbury will bring it down as Hutchins goes inside to the right side. Asbury turning now goes to Ladeen back to Asbury. As the time starts to tick, you can see it down the right-hand corner. Now to Hutchins. Hutchins going to stop, put it up. It's no good. Rebound by LaPointe. Off to Frost. Ladine uh, looks like he was trying to foul him, but uh, they don't call the foul. Now Footer 
24 seconds left, and then Ladeen, how they're gonna call this one. The two officials talking to the call a blocking foul. Yeah, I think they, they agreed on that call, I'm pretty sure, there wasn't too much. But it's not gonna be a one-on-one, -on -one. that's only the 15 foul. See, and this works against George Stevens Academy because they've still gotta commit a couple of more fouls before they can put Callis on the line, so they've really gotta go aggressive for the turnover and then foul almost immediately. Pass goes, and there's a foul right there against Morrill. Stops the clock at 22.1. 52 to 51 game. Anyone's game at this uh, juncture is uh, Chris LaPointe will put the ball in play. Hutchins right up there in his face. Now it goes to Footer, and there's the foul, so Nick Henry fouls, and Footer will be on the line for one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, Footer is not really the guy you want to foul if you've got a choice, but at this point, you really don't have a lot of choices. You need to stop the clock, put Callis on the line, hope they miss, and get the ball back. Even if Footer hits two here, a three-pointer will still tie it, so they're in good shape that way. So Footer goes to the line, puts it up, and good. Keith Ogden yells, no fouls, as Matt Matson of George Stevens calls timeout to set up his next possession. You yes. spoke about it uh, the other night, Joe. Uh, Joe Footer's real soft touch, and you saw it there with that backspin, didn't you? Certainly did. Matt Matson still reminds me of a Wall Street executive. Calls a timeout. He's got the... And, 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 he's, and he's right, too. If they sink this one, they still get an opportunity to tie the game with a three. If he misses it, they still get an opportunity to win the game with a three. Yeah, you want to keep the clock stopped as much as you can here. Like you say, if you're George Stevens, you don't want to foul Footer because he's their best shooter. But if you're Callis, you certainly want to put the ball in his hands and, and Callis won out on that particular situation. So in GSA, call the timeout to put Joe Footer in the freezer for a while. Now he'll come back out with his uh, second shot, 20.9 seconds left. And that's George Stevens' last time out, so they will not be able to stop the clock again. Callis, I believe, has one time out left. Ball shot up, no good! Rebound by Nick Henry. Off to Asbury. They can tie a win now. Off to Clapp, Clapp's gonna stop. Now goes inside to Hutchins, puts it up and in! We're gonna have an OT here. This is Frost, Frost down with it. The ball is going to for victory. He puts it up, and it's still good. They're going to call a blocking foul on Hutchins with four seconds left. Good attack by Provencio. Comes up limping and hurting a little bit, but he had the quickness advantage on Hutchins. Beat Hutchins to the baseline. Hutchins makes contact with the body. Here you come. There's Provencio. There's Hutchins. Didn't quite get there. Shot goes up. Doesn't go in, but the foul is called on Ryan Hutchins, who with four seconds left in regulation. And ailing James Provencia heads to the line for two. All shot is up and good. He cheers for himself. 54 to 53 with four seconds left. And George Stevens can't stop the clock. So if he misses this one, we'll see if they can get the ball down the court. Foul shot is up and good. So there's a two-point lead. Mark Clapp. Clapp's going to send up a three at the buzzer. The foul shot. And Callis has won this game in dramatic fashion by a score of 55 to 53. And both the Callis girls and the Callis boys have become victorious in a real fine played basketball game and two clutch foul shots by James Provincia with time running out. Andy Frost is bringing the ball down, saw Provincia on the right side. Provincia got by Hutchins, Hutchins fouled him, made uh, the two foul shots. And they win the game as Clapp tried a three at the, uh, at the end of the game, but it was shot. So, a great effort by GSA, a good basketball game. Yeah, just outstanding efforts. Pretty much the last team with the ball won, and uh, that was Callis. James Preventure, I'll tell you what, he went to the free throw line, he was grimacing. He had taken a good shot from Hutchins. Accidental, but just a good hard shot from the 6'8 player committing a foul, but... Uh, he certainly uh, shook that off, and now he doesn't feel a bit of pain. Probably Andy Frost doesn't.